So thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. We've got an amazing panel discussion with some amazing retailers from the Warehouse Group, Super Retail Group, and Big Red Group. So we have all the groups this afternoon. You need to have your headphones. There we go. Um, so really looking forward to jumping in the panel. I'll introduce them more completely very shortly, but thank you in advance for joining us. Before we jump into the panel discussion, I'd just like to share and set the context for what we're going to be talking through. So we produce a report called Shopper First Retailing on an annual basis now, and that looks at the shopper behaviours of more than 500 million shoppers across Commerce Cloud sites globally. It also looks at hundreds of millions of Service Cloud cases, and then we apply a layer of consumer interviews, so 6,000 consumer interviews globally, including 1,000 consumers here in Australia. That gives us a really good barometer and a great feeling in terms of what what uh, consumers are after and what the retailers need to meet their, their particular needs. So three key points that come out of that. One, we hear that 55% of consumers are saying that experiences are disconnected. And that disconnection can be between online and offline. It can be between various silos of your business, between maybe a service touch point uh, or a purchase touch point. So clearly, customers are saying they want to have a relationship with retailers. They don't just want to be a transaction. The second point, and from an Australian perspective, we've seen that 63% of Australians have said that retailers don't truly know them. And we're in a world now where there's a value exchange. Consumers are savvy. They know that we have a wealth of information about them, or we should have a wealth of information about them. And so they expect experiences um, and us to create experiences like we do know that. Unfortunately, big number, so almost two thirds of consumers said that retailers didn't demonstrate they really understood them as a shopper. And then lastly, consumers want freshness. So we saw that 70% of Australians uh, had a demand for new products, new products and services in store, and also things like in-store events where they're able to uh, understand what's new and exciting to really draw them into store and draw them into digital properties. So if we bundle all that together in terms of themes, we can really see that the consumer's in the driving seat, consumer expectations are absolutely increasing uh, on an ongoing basis, and it's our job and it's incumbent on us as retailers uh, and as B2C folks of the world to really deliver those experiences that shoppers need. So with that in mind, we're going to uh, jump into the panel and discuss how our wonderful retailers here are doing that. So I'd like to introduce Brian Townsend, uh, General Manager of Omni Retail from Super Retail Group, Brett Raven, who is the CIO for uh, Big Red Group, and Michelle Anderson, the Chief Digital Officer for the Warehouse Group. Maybe Michelle, do you want to kick us off, introduce yourself and uh, tell us a little about the Warehouse Group? Sure. So, conscious I'm talking to um, an Australian audience who might not have context around who we are in New Zealand. So, we're a, a portfolio of retail brands with um, four key brands, a general merchandise business, a stationery business, sports and outdoor and electronics. Um, we have a really large physical footprint across, the, uh, across New Zealand, 258 uh, stores, and a really, really strong online preference. In fact, our uh, warehouse website is um, number one in, in department stores for on, online trading. Wonderful. Brett, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, Brett Raven from the Big Red Group CIO. Uh, Big Red Group owns Red Balloon and Adrenaline and a couple of other businesses. We have an AI business and a rewards recognition platform. So... I think most people in the room would know Red Balloon. Uh, our founder has spoken today. Um, Adrenaline's a new acquisition for us. And our rewards and recognition program uh, follows on to the values of what we aspire as a business as well. So, Fantastic. Brian? Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, so my name is Brian Townsend, GM Omni Retail with Super Retail Group. Uh, actually, not many people necessarily have heard of Super Retail Group, but you've heard of our brands. Uh, BCF, Boating, Camping, Fishing. Rebel, Rebel Sports, and Super Cheap Auto are our main three, and we've recently acquired MatPack, uh, the brand from New Zealand as well. So we're uh, really stepping forward and delighted to be here today. Wonderful. So thanks for the introduction. We've heard a lot about connected experiences today, and we've seen that in the numbers. Maybe to kick us off, um, how do your customers demonstrate their expectations around connected experiences? So I might start off with you, Brian. Um, obviously, you've got physical stores, you have digital properties. What's the customer expectation around that level of connectedness? Um, yeah, I mean, it's a really interesting point. And actually, the numbers you, know, you suggested earlier, it, it surprises me how many people feel that it is connected. Um, our, our customers, uh, one of my mantras is like, we don't talk channel, we talk customer. And um, we've got a very uh, engaged loyalty base where we absolutely gather rich information about those customers. 
And we need to put that power irrespective of how they interact with us, whether it's the call center, the stores, the website, how do we use that data and have a more intelligent and meaningful conversation uh, to drive that forward? Particularly those loyalty customers who absolutely are high spenders with us, um, they have a high expectation. And Super Cheap Auto is a good example, where if we understand what car they have by looking at their registration, we personalize that experience purely around that car, which is then actually the, the other 95% of the catalog that's irrelevant to them, let's focus in on that. So we drive relevancy, it's really important for us. Fantastic. And Brett, your business is a little different. It's more experiential rather than things. But what does Connected mean for your, your customers? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we're a marketplace. So it's a little bit different than the problems that Michelle yeah. and Brian might have. Um, and we're also considered to be a three-sided marketplace. So our customers are not just the people who purchase, but they're also the people who experience the experience or the, the re recipient of the gift. And they're also the supplier as well. So we really have three key profiles that we have to track on a regular basis. And, uh, you know, leveraging the things like Marketing Cloud, Einstein, Commerce Cloud, and so on, helps us define and follow the journeys that those three different profiles have. So Wonderful. it's an ongoing uh, battle for us, definitely. Fantastic. And Michelle, so you've got a, a large uh, range of brands and range of stores. What does Connected mean for your customers? I think um, similar to what Brian was saying, we don't, we don't think in terms of online and offline. Uh, we really want our customers to be able to shop when they want to shop, where they want to shop and how they want to shop. So it's easy for us to join um, join that experience up in brands where we have a strong loyalty program. So much like the super cheap example, we can actually give the customer that experience. And I spoke earlier today about Noel Lemming who have a big uh, loyalty program through Flybys. And when somebody buys something um, in store, we can then serve them relevant messages via email around yeah. extending that purchase or adding a service product onto it. So it's really showing your customers that you know them, yep. no matter where they turn up and when they turn up. Fantastic. And I think it sounds like that's certainly the trend and that's the important bit around that relationship. Um, knowing your product range though, are there some elements that are transactional? If I want to go into the warehouse store for a relatively low value price point, is there still an opportunity to connect with that shopper? Absolutely, because even let's take mums for example. Mums are a really important segment to our to our warehouse brand, yep. and lots of the purchases that you make as as a, as a new parent are transactional. You need nappies, you need wipes, you you know you need the things to 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 raise your child, and so. Showing that mum that you know them, reminding them that it's time to purchase new nappies, putting right offers in front of them, growing with that child through the life stages, takes that transactional experience and turns it into a really positive brand and customer experience. Fantastic. Great. I know, Brian, uh, a lot of your business is focused on building passion within consumers, right? Um, and I understand uh, the aspect around, say, fishing or camping and maybe it's a personal thing, but maybe there's less passion in an automotive sense, uh, at least around transactional items. So if it's a lower value transactional purchase in, in super cheap auto, for example, how do you build up that relationship from a customer point of view? Um, ab absolutely right around the passion part. It's core to our, to our business and organization. Um, and one of our mantras is helping, helping the individual catch the fish. It's not just selling them the rod. It's yep. getting the outcome. Um, and yes, there's a convenience factor to, do you know what, my wiper's gone or I need some uh, extra wiper juice to get rid of the bugs, whatever it might be. Um, but every interaction is an opportunity. Um, so we can build on that customer, we can get to know them more. And if we delight them on the small things, then that yep. gives you permission to, to step forward and it, extend that relationship. So um, whether they're spending $2 or $2,000, uh, it doesn't matter. Um, and you are in a minority about cars and passion, <laughs> for, for the record. We have some complete, Maybe I need to get out a little more, com sure. complete car nuts uh, <laughs> in terms of trying to re rebuilding motors from scratch and stuff. So. Okay, having, having seen the Parramatta store, I completely agree in terms of super cheap. Um, we spoke a little bit before, Michelle, about uh, what looks good in these connected experiences, and you shared an example of a makeup brand that you thought did that really well. Do you mind sharing that? No, no, not at all. So a brand that I really admire and love shopping at is Sephora. And I think as a as a big global brand, they do a fantastic job of, of connecting through digital, through their physical experience. Um, those of you who have shopped in Sephora know around the skin ID. So you can go in there and they'll take a photo of your skin and then they'll send you, they'll email you every foundation that you need. They'll email you... Um, 
you know, when you're about to run out on that. So it, they just they just do a really fantastic job of not only making it easier, but once they know your preferences, surprise and delight you with other things that you might need. So maybe not so relevant to the guys in the audience, but um, honestly, it is a great customer experience. Excellent. And Brett, who does this really well from your point of view? Uh, to be honest, the Iconic is somebody that I'm a big fan of when it comes to the full connection all the way through. So every shopping experience I've had feels more and more personal as I go. And all the way through to the transaction, the shipping, when I need to do returns and, and refunds, um, actually feels like they they know me and they kind of care about me. So right. uh, that's one of the brands I'd like to aspire from. Our, I mean, it's different for us, right? We're, we don't have returns and refunds, for example. But we do want to follow people all the way through the journey uh, from the point where they buy the gift to giving the experience to having the experience and also thanking the person who gave them that gift. So there's the whole journey that we need to follow. We're still refining that as we go. Sure. Okay. Fantastic. And Brian, who, who excels in this space from, from your point of view? You've joined us fairly recently in Australia, so maybe is there an international example or, or someone locally that you'd call out? Um, I think there's lots of people doing lots of good things in different areas. The, the, one of the ones that resonates with me um, is Netta Porter in the, in the UK. Um, Utes and a porter they are now. Um, high-end fashion online. A lot of people said you, people that have a lot of money don't buy high-end fashion online. It's all about the experience. You go in and you touch. Um, and they've introduced certain propositions, particularly in the London area, where they have a 30-minute delivery service. Mm -hmm. So you can buy it online and there is a delivery within 30 minutes. And it's not just a standard delivery. It is the shiniest black Mercedes van you've seen. A man in white gloves, well pruned, like the whole brand experience end to end is absolutely amazing. Yep. Um, so I think they've absolutely broken down barriers and, and driven a, a really engaging proposition. Fantastic. And just sticking with that theme around, around click and collect, so maybe just a moment of recognition, congratulations to the whole Super Retail Group team, but certainly yourselves and the team for your recent recognition. So for those unaware, Super Cheap Auto recently won an Omni, Omni Retailing Award uh, inside retail. Uh, and Rebel won uh, Best Customer Experience as well. So great recognition for the group. Um, and also congratulations on your, your recent results. So fantastic work there. Uh, yeah, thank you. We've, we've got some momentum. We've still got lots to do, but uh, it's great to be recognized. Thank Lovely. You. And I think you've been quoted publicly talking about um, the transformation that, that you're on towards that and certainly saying that technology is a component, but there's also a business change and a cultural change and an organizational change that goes with that. Do you mind sharing how you've approached that with your Group Omni team and how you do it overall? Uh, sure. Um, so particularly with cloud-based solutions and so forth, technology is getting easier and easier, right? Um, it's not about that. It's very much around how are we going to create uh, the environment, the culture, the, the DNA to drive the outcome that we're trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. um, and particularly within Super Retail Group, historically we've almost been a house of brands. Uh, with all of the brands working in their own way, uh, with their own processes, their own people. The level of expertise varied greatly across the organization. And one of the things that we did through, um, through the project of implementing Commerce Cloud was we created um, what I call the Go Team, Group Omni. And uh, that's very much around creating a center of excellence that drives standards uh, across the whole organization in terms of that Omni retail piece. So we're really stepping forward. It enables us all to also have deep expertise and specialisms. Whereas historically, somebody kind of had 10% of this, 15% of that, 20%, and there was generalists. We're now investing heavily to create specialists. Mm -hmm. um, we're therefore giving people career paths, and um, everyone is flourishing as a result. The balance that we've now got is actually that everyone is suddenly attracted to working within the group, and the brands are going, hey, stop making all the decent people. Um, but we'll work that through. Um, it also creates some interesting cultural challenges around KPIs. Um, so actually conversion rate, who's responsible for conversion rate? There are so many factors that impact conversion. Yep. Um, so actually we all need to be comfortable that there isn't necessarily one single person that's responsible for it. Are we all moving in the right direction, all doing the right things and all driving it? So, that, so there's been significant cultural change with it. Um, as with always, some people embrace it straight away, some people are a little bit resistant, you've got to support those people. Um, but I think we're kind of out the other side of that change and we're really kicking on. Fantastic. Great to hear. And maybe the same question for you, Michelle. I know you've got a similar uh, business in terms of a house of brands to a certain extent. H how do you approach that organizational design and getting the KPIs in alignment correct? 
So we are a matrix organisation and recently created our marketing centre of excellence probably probably about 12 months ago. So what we have is our brand teams aligned to the four um, retail brands, which previous to that actually ran independently. Um, we've brought them all into the COE and we have sent, set up platform teams to support them. So a team that works on customer lifecycle marketing and DMP, a media team, an e-commerce team. So what that means is that these people are becoming deep functional experts working across a suite of brands and actually we've seen our pace of delivery accelerate right. because of that and we've shared learnings across. So um, it's it's proving to be quite a quite a successful model and great for team engagement. They love it. And I think that, that's really key in terms of sharing that knowledge and, and that test and learn approach among the brands. How do you tactically do that? Is that insight sharing sessions? Is it workshops? Is it everyone looking at the same KPIs? Is it so we've, um, we've got a, a marketing COE strategy and a set of goals. And those goals are aligned across all of our brands and our teams. So there's really good visibility of what each area is driving for. The targets might be different within the brands depending sure. on where they are at the journey. So we know the 12 things we want to measure and understand. And then it's just every quarter, every month, how are we moving the dial to deliver that? Brilliant. And maybe, uh, Brian, in terms of focus from that arrangement, does that help or how does that help um, you to focus on areas you should be focusing on or versus things you shouldn't be doing at all from a group and then an individual brand point of view? Um, yeah, it, it creates an interesting dynamic because obviously being all of the brands on one platform, yeah. um, we, we've kind of had a mantra of we have a single roadmap and single prioritization and actually we want to develop things once and utilize them across yeah. Uh, the platform, it makes sense, right? Um, but there are nuances that we need to cater for as well. Um, so Super Cheap Auto will have some very unique requirements that aren't relevant to the other brands and so forth. So we need to strike the balance of where we invest our time and our effort. Mm -hmm. um, ruthless prioritization is ongoing. Um, so actually we've got a framework, very transparent, that all of the brands can see of how we prioritize our backlog. Um, and we have regular sessions where we engage with that. And we, we've transitioned from big project delivery uh, to an agile model, uh, working with our partners and Blake, um, to con continually improve the, the platform and that transparency of the backlog is critical. Right. New ideas come up, absolutely, put it through the process, where does it sit? Yeah, fantastic. And you mentioned before about um, aligning or thinking customer rather than channel. So how has that changed your KPI focus, say between a traditional marketing and e-com or retail and e-com perspective? How are you all looking and measuring customer success? Um, yeah, it's a journey, right? Um, I, I still wince um, when one of my team sends out a report that talks about email and the, what is delivered online but doesn't talk about more broadly what is delivered in store. Uh, so don't think we've like, had a silver bullet and fixed it. Um, but absolutely, we're, we're joining the teams together to work on problems. And, and part of the change with the uh, with the with the Go team and other broader activity across the organisation is to work with value streams, as we call them now. Yeah. So breaking down internal silos, different members of the teams come together to work on specific problems. We don't care where you sit in the organisation. If you've got the right intellect, the right attitude, you're part of that team to help solve the problem. Got it. Um, and again, that's been a cultural uh, challenge as well. Again, some people have embraced it and loved it. Others haven't. Um, but we're delivering key outcomes now at a much faster rate. So it helps bring others on board. I might uh, hit you up for some advice on that because that's a journey we're going through is transforming the business to make sure that we cover off all the needs of the business, the requirements business, in its silos. We have four businesses in the group. I'd um, love to learn more from, sorry, I didn't mean to jump in. That's good. I'd <laughs> love to learn more from the processes you've established now, uh, especially as an agile company, right? Uh, yeah, happy to share, absolutely. Thank you. Perfect. So maybe just to segue to you, Brett, if you're feeling left out clearly, so that's okay. Um, what does is, what is customer success metrics look like for you? Because you've got a different business, but in terms of that customer appreciation of that experience, it's obviously evolving. What's, what's important for you and the team? As I said before, um, you know, it's the journey of the whole way through. So yep. between the person doing the purchasing. So if you're buying a gift for Red Balloon, for example, you want to get that feedback that you gave a gift to somebody and they used that gift and they enjoyed it. That's a channel pro problem that we're trying to work on right now. It's a bit difficult sometimes. If I give you a gift, I don't know if you've used it. So yep. I don't know the voucher's been established yet. So there's a, 
there's a communication channel that we're trying to bridge the gap of now, which will be huge for us, I think. Um, the same goes for the suppliers as well. So we have to make sure that the supplier feels like they've had a good experience with the way they've engaged with the company. And we also can get feedback in the future from the supplier as far as how the customer experience was. So, so there's a whole chain of events that um, you know, we're still working on. It's still a challenge for us. But um, in the meantime, we spend a lot of time listening to our customer. Uh, we have people, including Naomi, who she mentioned earlier, sits down on the phone and listens into some of the phone calls. Yeah, brilliant. Um, so we use CE as a way to drive what is really valuable from a customer's perspective, uh, which is something that we kind of lost our way for for a while now. So, yeah, so that's really driving a lot of value for us. Fantastic. I think it's so important to have execs in the whole business involved through that yeah, process uh, to make sure they're absolutely. hearing firsthand. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Anything else you want to add there, Michelle, in terms of KPIs or metrics and how that's coming together across your organization? Well, our um, key KPI, one of the key KPIs that we look at, look at is customer life lifetime value. Brilliant. And what we know is a, and you know, you've heard the stats, but we've proven it for ourselves, that a multi-channel customer is worth three times more to us than one that operates in a single channel. So that creates the cohesiveness for, for the teams mm -hmm. to drive to the end result. Fantastic. Now we saw some of the numbers before in terms of the customer expectations. Uh, we've had a whole range of discussion today talking about the fourth industrial revolution, uh, I'm here to tell you that mobile's a thing, as we all know. Um, we, from that Shopper First retailing, we've seen that 83% of customers are using their mobile devices in store to do things like look at reviews or to keep shop assistants on their toes or to learn more about a product. Um, how are you seeing mobile initially uh, evolve within your business? So I know, for example, Brett, you know, mobile is a key part of your strategy and certainly your customers are very mobile. H how are you seeing that trend play out? Sure, sure. So, um you know, one of the reasons why we're a Commerce Cloud customer is because we didn't have a great mobile first experience on our legacy stack. So thankfully, after we've launched, 20% increase in mobile conversion. So I'm pretty hey. happy about that. Um, we have now at least 70% mobile traffic on our site, yep. which changes the way you look at your KPIs for your business, I find. So it's less about sessions now and more about users. Right? If you look mm -hmm. in GA, I think it's important to focus on that user metric now rather than just sessions. Um, so it is changing the way that we're looking at things, but absolutely, as a result of conversion rates being lower than desktop, we have to find a way to bridge that gap. So on, you know, on a very regular basis, we're looking at UX to figure out what it is that we can do to get people to convert more on that mobile experience. Because before, they would just use it as a shopping device. They would browse, then they go to work, and then they would finish the transaction at that point. Mm -hmm. um, so trying to learn from that experience, bringing it back into mobile is our key strategy at this point. Great. And in an omni retail environment, Brian, how do you, you've got a lot of stores? So how do, how do you really use mobile as the glue to connect that that digital and the store experience? Um, so yeah, mo mobile is fundamental, mo most definitely. Um, obviously, doing some basic things like click and collect on a customer's mobile. I mean, we had historically um, slight segue. Forgive me. Um, we used to have afterpay only online and not in store, and we used to have customers sitting outside on their mobiles. <laughs> Uh, using Afterpay online and then coming in to pick up their click and collect uh, order. So that, it, it drove certain customer behavior. Yeah. Um, but now, absolutely, it, it's all in the customer's uh, palm. What we're seeing is um, obviously they are empowered, they are looking at reviews, they're looking at more rounded information. Um, but for us, there's a certain level of interaction and passion with some of our brands. And we'll take BCF as an example, where there's literally people waiting to speak to our team members. About to get advice on how to catch a certain fish, which you don't find online in an easy, coherent way. It's like, yeah. here's my problem, you know, it's doing this, it's biting this line, what do you reckon? And that level of engagement drives it up. Um, and critically as well, our team members are increasingly getting mobile devices so they can support transacting all of our range uh, in a store footprint. So if we sold out of, the, uh, of your Addy's size 11, we'll get them to you delivered tomorrow so we save the sale in that context for us is really important as well yep. as part of that category leadership position. And it's really using the power of your store assets and, and your people as well. I think it's a brilliant strategy. Michelle, mobile is really key to you. You've got a mobile app as well as uh, mobile experience and, and store linkage. Do you want to talk us through that? So um, the app is actually for the warehouse brand something that we're doubling down on because what we see is even though it's a mobile device, conversion is way higher, like mm -hmm. higher than, than desktop, higher than um, their mobile web. So, and the customers are spending more time 
browsing the product range and so you know engage, engagement is high so what we've done is developed out capability in the app to um, enhance that experience so you can take a photo of an item and find something similar in our catalogue you can also use the app in store to scan prices and get richer information so we're continually releasing new features into it because um, it is giving a really great experience and customers are engaging with it. Brilliant. And obviously mobile is important for now, but if you look on the, the next horizon, there's things like voice and other aspects as well. Do you want to maybe talk us through how you're, you're thinking about voice uh, and it impacts your store or other emerging technologies? I was kind of looking to you guys for the answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had a little bit more about Einstein voice, obviously, in the keynote. Uh, you'll hear as a plug. Uh, 315 Commerce Cloud session, we'll hear a little bit more about yeah. that as well. Um, and obviously that, that's, that's emerging. I know you use things like live chat though as well to interact with your staff members. So it seems it's about connecting your most knowledgeable staff members with, uh, with the customer. Is that, is that the right approach? Yeah. So, um, yes, we do have live chat across all of our brands and actually we're trying to drive customers to that channel. And actually customers are going to that channel because that's where they, you know, they just want to get their question answered and dealt with rather than get on the phone or go in an email queue. We are experimenting in voice from a brand perspective in terms of how we can connect up to um, some of the smart devices, but we haven't released anything to sure. market at this point. And I think of interest, you know, I've seen a, a lot of stats that the audience have probably seen as well and so far as ongoing usage of, of voice services, there tends to be a spike uh, on initial purchase as you're trying things out. The longevity doesn't seem to be, quite be there. Um, that'll evolve, I'd suspect, uh, as the use cases evolve, but certainly it's still nascent, I'd say. Uh, Brett or Brian, do you have anything to add there in terms of how you're looking at, at that challenge? Um, it's interesting for our business because you can actually do a purchase of a hot air balloon ride, for example, without seeing the hot air balloon. Yeah. Um, so I think it's probably harder for physical retailers to close the loop on what, you, you know, from a purchase perspective, transactionally. Um, I know there are smart devices coming out now that have screens as well as a smart speaker built into it. So that's probably where you get most of your traction. Um, definitely keen to experiment with this. I think now is the time to do it. Getting that brand establishment in a category, I think would be really important. Uh, and yeah, the stuff that we saw with Einstein um, voice today, uh, I've got some of my dev team here. They're pretty excited to get on that. So definitely have an experiment with it. Looking forward to it. Yeah. And Brian? Um, so one of our um, key areas of, we have a concept of test and learn, where we're always experimenting with new things. Um, and voice without question is gonna be, is gonna be huge, right? Um, and for us, we see an opportunity beyond product as well. So services is increasingly important to us. So we can imagine a scenario with super cheap auto where we look in your calendar, we know your car is ready for service, uh, we engage with you, we find the right appointment booking slot for you, through, all through a voice interaction, and we book that service and then you come. Um, and obviously we know who you are, what your car is, your history, et cetera, et cetera. So at a level of interaction, we see there being a lot of opportunity. Um, for me at the moment, and again, we did a lot of work with voice uh, back in the UK, it, it lends itself more to repeat purchases than necessarily first time, unique, that you can't see and interact with and that kind of thing, which again, some of our range, it, it fits. Um, but we're, we're experimenting and playing with, uh, pl playing with voice at the moment. Excellent. And maybe on to the last step we saw about newness and consumers uh, expecting newness. I know it's a big part of your passion strategy, if you will, overall to really bring customers into store with events and to talk about, with your fishing example, you know, the, the full range of capabilities around that. Uh, is that really the key strategy or are there other elements that you use, Brian, around addressing newness and that consumer desire for you know, knowing more about the products and, and their uses? Um, with, with that question, our member nights, um, in terms of whether it's BCF or Super Cheap or in particular, um, are m ridiculously popular, um, where it's about hanging out with like-minded friends than a retail event, if you know what I mean. So our trade partners will come in, they'll showcase activities, touch, feel, um, and often get uh, sighted products that haven't hit market yet. So that's all part of that community and part of that passion. Um, that's our key element around driving newness. Obviously, there's new product all the time and so forth, but actually driving that physical interaction for us is really, really important. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And Brett, what does newness mean to your customers? Uh, I'm assuming there's a lot, well, no, there's a lot of peaks and troughs around key events days in particular, but how, how do you communicate that to customers? Yeah, you're right. So, we, you know, we're kind of um, uh, destined to be on that for the Hallmark holidays per year. So it's... Sure. Well, that's one of the challenges for us as a business, trying to flatten all that stuff out, look for yeah. other days and other opportunities. Um, 
but range is really the way that we can get that newness feeling. So mm -hmm. we do the standard kind of promoting new products on the website, using Einstein for merchandising, and you know, getting down that road a bit more. But um, as we expand our range and look for things that we can offer within the group that are similar but different, so our, our adrenaline um, acquisition helps us supplement the, the group. Red Balloon's a gifting business. You buy a voucher, you give a voucher to somebody. Um, adrenaline's more about booking so you can go do something now. A very different kind of uh, yep. asset base. So, so as the group expands, um, we look for more complementary brands so we can offer more to the same audience. Fantastic. And Michelle, you, your brands are quite diverse in terms of product range. So you've got everything from fashion to consumer electronics to bikes. And I'm sure there's a, a different frequency. How do you, how do you differentiate in newness or how do you communicate some of those concepts to customers? Is the expectation the same if I'm buying a, a, a shirt as, it, as opposed to a $3,000 TV? No, it's, 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 it's probably a, a bit different. So, um, uh, we, we are, like some of the others, driven, driven by uh, seasonal categories. We also know through the use of data what products customers are um, engaging in. So, when we've got something new to push forward and... Um, let's say the latest Dyson vacuum cleaner or the latest e-bike, we can use the information to tailor that experience from a comms perspective and then link it to in-store so that you can actually right. go and touch and feel it because when you're spending that much money, um, most customers want to come into store and, and, and have a play. So we wrap the experience side around it in a couple of our brands where it makes sense to do that. Fantastic. I can't see the screen, but I have a time check from the back. We're out of time. So fantastic. Thank you so much for the panel. Before we do go, I have one quick plug, two quick plugs actually. So 3.15, we're on in uh, Breakout C for Commerce. So to come learn all about commerce, uh, highly recommend you come along there. And Brett will be joining us and sharing a little bit more about the Red Balloon story. So very worthwhile. The other thing is connections in Chicago. So we have uh, connections happening in June in Chicago. It's our premier global event for commerce, marketing and service. So highly recommend you get along to that. Thank you again to the panel. Really appreciate your insights and your time today. So thank you so much. Thanks, AJ.